Ahoy fellow history buffs, journey dude here. Did you ever wonder why punch of medieval knight might dash off to the Scotland after a wee bit of problems in France? Prepare to be dazzled by your tales of treachery, treasures and tantalizing mysteries of knight templars in the Scottish land. Grab your armor and let's dive deep into this rabbit hole. Picture this. The year is 1119. You are a Christian pilgrim and you got your bags packed, sandals laced up, ready to head to the Holy Land. Only problem, the journey got more bandits than a Hollywood heist movie. Enter the Templars. Starting off as the ultimate Holy Land tour guides. If by a tour guides we mean armed escorts. We're all about keeping pilgrims safe. But like any good startup, they went viral. Before you could say Holy Grail, these fellas morphed into one of the mightiest Christian military orders. They weren't just about swords and shield through. No, these guys had ambition, business savvy and some serious networking skills. So next time you think of the Templars, remember they were more than just knights. They were medieval superheroes, minus the capes. Well, most of the time. So fast forward a bit and the Templars are living the good life. I mean they are basically the medieval version of tech moguls. Super rich, influential and with bases or you know castles in all the hotspots. But here is the thing about money and power. They are like honey, super sweet, but they attract some sticky situations and a ton of jealous bees. Enter King Philip IV of France. Now, Phil was the kind of guy who forgot his wallet on a day, especially when he owed big bucks. And guess who we owed? You got it, our Templar buddies. Instead of setting up a payment plan, Phil thought, why it'll just cancel Templars? So, in 1307, in what could only be described as one of the biggest medieval dramas, many Templars were rounded up, slapped with made-up charges, spoiler alert, things didn't add up well for them. Ouch. A lesson in there. Always be cautious if you are lending money to a king named Phil. So, picture this. You are a Templar. Things are going south and you need a getaway. Where do you go? Spain? Too sunny. France? Awkward given the recent breakup. Ah, Scotland. A place of rugged beauty, haggis and, crucially, a king who is on the Pope's naughty list. You see, our pal Robert the Bruce had ruffled some papal feathers, earning himself a big old excommunication. But every cloud has a silver lining. Because of this, Scotland became the medieval equivalent of a no papal zone. It means that when the Pope said, arrest those Templars, Scotland just shrugged and said, I didn't catch that mate. Some savvy Templar seeking sanctuary and maybe a wee drum of whiskey made the beeline for the Scottish Highlands. Safe from prying eyes, they probably injured some Caliph, mingled with locals and just maybe left a lasting legacy. Now, here is the wee wild tale for you. Let's jump to the 1314, Bannockburn. The Scots vastly outnumbered are facing the formidable English army. By all accounts, it should be an easy win for the English. But then, plot twist. The Scots claim victory against all odds. How did they pull that off, you wonder? Well, that's where the story gets spicy. There are whispers, just whispers, mind you, that the Templars, those enigmatic knights, had a hand on it. While no one found the Templars membership card on the battlefield or any Isle of Templars badges. The shock of the Scots triumph made many believe they had some divine warriors on their side. Maybe the Templars in their shiny helmets gave the Scots some tactical advice. Or maybe they were there, fighting side by side, all sneaky like. We might never know for sure. But the thought of Templars yelling for Scotland and charging into battle, oh, it gives me a chills. So imagine a wee chapel, tucked away in Scotland, looking all innocent, that's a Roslyn Chapel for you. But don't let its quiet demeanor fool you. This place is bursting with secrets. Built in the 15th century, every nook and cranny of this chapel is adorned with the curious carvings and symbols. Now, here is where things get wild. These symbols are a cheeky nod to the Templars. I mean, it's like the medieval version of Easter egg hunt. But the juiciest bit, rumors swirl that the holy grail on the Templar's treasure might be stashed away here. Before you grab a shovel and head to Roslyn, let's be clear, there is no solid proof. But isn't the thrill of the unknown just so tantalizing? So next time you are at Roslyn Chapel, give a wink to those carved Templars. 
they might just wing back with their stone-cold secrets. Is the 21st century in Scotland but the spirit of the Templars? Still partying like it's 1119. The Mighty Knights might hang up their chainmail centuries ago, but they didn't leave Scotland without a piece of flair that just won't fade. From lively Templar festival, where you might do a cheek in the knightly armor, mind you, to guide the tours of their legendary hangouts. Scotland got the Templar fun game on point. Heck, there's even folks in modern Scotland who over a pint of ale might lean in a whisper. Oh, if I've got a bit of Templar in my blood. Whether it's true or just the bragging rights, who knows? And that, dear viewers, is how you keep a legacy kicking. The Templars in Scotland didn't just fade into the mighty highlands. They became a legendary party that's still going on. Slan Chiva to that. All right, folks. From nights to festivals, Scotland's Night Templar tale is one for the ages. Remember, every stone and story here have a past. And until next time, keep your armor shiny and tales tall.